very much for inviting me here, Ruhan Foundation, and uh, greetings from one small country to another. Uh, I understood that the Netherlands is slightly bigger than Slovenia. I couldn't imagine that, but uh, we have definitely more inhabitants. Uh, the Netherlands is rather crowded, and there is lots of space here, so it's nice to be here. Um, five and a half years ago, my life was changed. I didn't do it myself that much. Well, I had a choice, of course, but um, I've been a freelance designer most of my life, working on my own, like Philip. And five and a half years ago, a message reached me. They wanted to make me a professor of typogra typography, of typographic design, at the University of Leiden. What you see here is Leiden's university building, and I will come back to it. Um, well, actually, um, I had the idea that I had a nice career behind me, and uh, so I wasn't very eager to become a professor. And um, finally, I was more or less pushed to a meeting um, where um, they invited me again, and I told them, listen, I've never finished my secondary school, I haven't got a diploma of any kind, uh, I have a driving <coughs> license, but that's it. <laughs> and uh, they looked out of the window, they weren't interested, and I told them I failed in my military service, I <laughs> wasn't a success there, uh, again, they were not interested. Uh, they definitely wanted to have me as a professor of technology, so I said, okay. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and very, very nice. And then suddenly I had to uh, start writing heavily on the theory of uh, typography, which of course I had uh, never neglected, but uh, had never been really at the forefront of my uh, interests. And then it so happened that this building, uh, this is the origin of Leiden University. It all started in this building in 1581. It's rather a young university uh, for European standards. Um, it was being restored. And uh, they were approaching its completion. And they needed a couple of things. They needed some inscriptions and they needed carpets. What? Uh, I've never designed a carpet in my life before. Um, so, very nice job. Um, I became sort of the university designer for a short while. Here you see the same building in the uh, 18th century, and uh, probably some of you have heard of a famous uh, Dutch printing family, sort of printing dynasty and book selling dynasty, the Elzevirs. They had one of their first shops here in this part of the uh, building. What is it? And uh, this is um, a print from uh, 1614. And as you can see here in the pavement, there is worked into the pavement a big text. And that was really the start of their uh, commission. They wanted a text back there. Uh, and the text is Musa Sernobeat, the Muses uh, <coughs> delight heaven, or the Muse delights heaven, rejoices heaven. And we started researching, but it uh, so happens that nowadays, here it, underneath the pavement, there are <coughs> telephone lines, there are gas pipes, there are water pipes, there is a uh, 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 sewer system, there's everything there, and they have to. Uh, dug up things there, uh, dig up uh, things there um, every month uh, or so, and parking meters are there. And so it was out of the question. You couldn't bring back uh, any piece of everything there. And they gave me a couple of texts, and uh, very nice they were. They are all from the time that uh, Latin was the uh, language of ch science and the church, by the way. Um, the uh, top one is the one that you found in the street, and then there is Presidium Academia, etc. 
Leiden University a fortress of freedom is the translation. Bora Est is a very simple text that is its time. This um, is then when you go in for a PhD, uh, you have to go through a ceremony defending your thesis and you do it for exactly three quarters of an hour. So right in the middle of a question you hear banging on the floor and the beetle comes in uh, and shouts Bora Est and the ceremony is over and you've got your PhD. And the Lucius Ante Omnia Muse, the sweet muses for everything. Um, so, indeed, uh, a nice uh, commission. And here is, let's give this one. This was one of the rooms, a very nicely uh, vaulted room. I um, um, had to, uh, they had already laid a new floor in here. Uh, with uh, tiles of uh, a very dark and beautiful stone and uh, virgin like floor and my letters had to be uh, cut or sandblasted in there somehow. And then there was the Senate room and as a sort of second thought they decided that they wanted a new carpet in the Senate room. This is actually the room wherein you do your PhDs. It's a beautiful room uh, which uh, holds portraits of uh, all the uh, uh, former university rectors and right in the middle here there is a portrait of uh, William of Orange uh, the man who gave us uh, our independence in the Netherlands helped us get, uh, gain our independence and who also told the uh, rulers of the time that uh, they needed a university that if they wanted to communicate with the surrounding countries they needed civilized people, they needed educated people who could talk on the same level with diplomats from other countries and uh, for that kind of people you needed the university. And um, what you will see is that one of the themes I chose as a, uh, an element in my designs uh, comes from these walls. Many of these portraits uh, have uh, passepartouts um, oval in shape and as the, uh, the tiles I had to work with measured 40 by 40 centimeters um, were square I pushed the oval together a bit so that it became a uh, circle you can see it return what I did not want to do was use one of my already existing typefaces for this job so you begin to wonder how will I approach this. Some things are simply given, like the uh, measurement of the uh, tiles, and uh, it was easy to pick this, pluck this theme from the wall of the uh, Senate room. And what are you going to do with the, uh, the letter forms? Uh, this is my uh, Capitolian News, uh, which is used by actually a Danish newspaper, Politiken. So next time you see Politiken. Uh, try it out and uh, it's nice enough it's typical for me I've always tried to please the readers whenever I design a typeface I think heavily of uh, the readers uh, and I always put in uh, experiment so that uh, it stays below the conscious the level of consciousness that uh, people will notice the experiment but not conscious and for example the uh, that's very uh, normal for my work the counters of the uh, letters are very big and that makes the letter forms very clear so that you can use them in small sizes well actually these newspaper typefaces work very well on uh, iPhones and iPads they uh, do wonderfully well there they bring a lot of text on the tiny screen of an iPhone so that you get a nice read lots of text still on such a small screen and uh, reading satisfaction is uh, really good but I didn't want to use this I wanted to do something very different and uh, I went back to a couple of experiments I had been uh, working with um, this is one from uh, 1988 I had designed a typeface for an American firm called Bitstream uh, a few years earlier and the typeface is called Amerigo, after Amerigo Vespucci, 
Italian uh, explorer after whom the whole continent has been named. And this was part of this illustration, the representation of it is awful, that's the beamer, I'm very sorry about this. Uh, you have all to move at the far end of the, the, the back of the room to see it properly. Um, the, um, um, this was an illustration in an annual report, an annual report for a firm that consisted of a conglomerate of firms, a uh, printing firm, advertising agency, copy shops and a few things like that. So communication was the general theme. And uh, the question was, uh, how, how much information do you really need to get a message across? Or, with how little information can I fully express myself? Those were the uh, two questions. So I started reducing uh, letter forms, and you can see at the right there, I ended with what I thought of as nice shapes. I uh, wasn't sure what I could do with them, but uh, they were nice shapes. Here's another uh, bit of uh, playing with those letter forms, see what I get out of them. And uh, I even went further that uh, I started uh, toying with uh, the counters of the uh, letters. Uh, and here is another one from the same animal report. Um, this was some sort of vague research, not really aimed at a specific purpose. Uh, what can I do with all these different things? And then <coughs> something happened uh, which uh, I found uh, very pleasurable. Um, you have been uh, receiving phone calls with uh, nice permission. Well, that happened to me too. Um, one day I got a phone call and there was a woman on the phone who asked me, um, listen, uh, there is an office building in the um, southern part of uh, the city of Amsterdam, uh, seven stories, and we need a work of art to <coughs> fill the stairwell, um, a work of art which will at the same time be a, an information uh, <coughs> system to let people who come out of the elevators <coughs> know which floor they are. And she asked me, can you do that? And then I, at that moment, I decided that whenever I get a phone call, and whatever the question is, I will say yes. <laughs> so I did it. And um, then she asked me, um, how are you going to solve this? And I started thinking very quickly. And uh, for some reason, the first thing that came up in my mind were mobiles by Alexander Calder. So I uh, fantasized uh, and I said something about uh, parts of numerals floating in space in the stairwell and uh, sometimes they would meet and you could read the numerals and then they would drift apart again. And uh, she said, hmm, uh, I will call you back. <laughs> and she did. A week later, she called me and she told me, you've got the job. And then I was in real trouble because how was I going to solve this problem of these parts of neurons floating into space? And then I got in touch with a uh, textile artist who had done beautiful work and we had some of her work at our home. And uh, I asked her, uh, will you work with me uh, on this uh, commission? And she said, yes. Uh, silk banners of uh, about a meter wide, two and a half meters long, and um, I designed the numerals, and she chose the colors, and because the banners are uh, transparent, uh, you had to use extremely strong colors to make the colors come out, otherwise the colors would not work. And what happened was that if you took the stairs, then uh, you would uh, have this view of the uh, three banners uh, behind each other, and when you would come out of the uh, elevators, then uh, this is what you would see. You would recognize the uh, letter forms. And, um, well, the client was uh, very pleased and uh, it all worked very well. And uh, here you can see the stairwell uh, from above. You look down into it. We uh, um, hung up the um, banners ourselves. 
and um, which was in itself really quite adventurous, uh, working in a stairwell. <coughs> and here you see the thing from uh, below. Uh, one of the things was hap what happened was that this, um, in the Netherlands, lots of people go to, to their work on bicycles. And there is usually in every office building a bicycle um, sort of shed in the basement. And the first person who would come in in the morning would open the outer door, uh, make it stay open, open the inner door, and make it stay open too. So that everybody that would come after would, would go quickly with their bicycle into the uh, basement. But if there was a westerly wind blowing, it would blow in that side door, come up in the uh, stairwell, and the whole work of art would be upside down. And uh, so we had to uh, add uh, thin lead threads at the bottom of the uh, banners in the seams. But it was usually, they were waving gently, so it was essentially a huge uh, kinetic work of art. Well, I don't think you have any problem uh, realizing that uh, I like this uh, art. It's Ellsworth Kelly, this blooper from 1982 in the uh, State Museum of uh, Amsterdam. And uh, what I like immensely is uh, the contrast that uh, there is in Kelly's work. Uh, he makes also plant drawings that I think are very beautiful, uh, very simple, very straightforward. Um, it's the kind of drawing that I'd like to make when uh, I was a student at the uh, academy. So I recognized a lot of uh, uh, my own approach to um, shapes uh, in the work of uh, Ellsworth Kelly. Ellsworth <coughs> Kelly doesn't know about this. I hope to meet him one day to pay him my uh, tribute and compliments. Uh, these shapes. Uh, they had been at work a little in the uh, uh, stairwell uh, job you have just seen. And in uh, 1991, I uh, received a request from uh, Fonshop and Neville Brody. Fonshop and Neville Brody had started to gather a series of publications called Fuse. Uh, they called it a magazine, but essentially it was a cardboard box. You got a lot of cardboard box. And uh, in it would be a little disc with a couple of unusual fonts on it, uh, together with uh, posters displaying the unusual fonts. And uh, when uh, they asked me for the uh, second issue, they told me the theme is uh, runes, or essentially secret writing, writing that people can't read. And um, then you start thinking, how can I make an illegible typeface, or one that is very difficult to and I decided not to design a typeface at all, but design a couple of shapes. Um, add a few more shapes to the shapes I already had. Here are the uh, shapes, and uh, what I added was a huge uh, full stop and comma as a sort of bonus that you got for free with the uh, shapes. And um, the uh, users could put together letter forms uh, themselves with the help of the shapes. And of course you have to help them a little, show them how do you do this. Um, so here is the uh, name of the uh, design, it's called Decoder. And uh, this is the kind of thing you can uh, make with it. And then you start thinking, well, this whole idea of these shapes, um, I've, I've used it several times now. So I suppose that um, I've uh, pressed all the juice out of this uh, orange, um, and I have to move on to uh, new things, other things. But then uh, I got a very nice uh, commission from a psychiatric hospital in the Netherlands. And um, an amazing client, uh, because um, this is something like, what was it? 1999, so that's uh, 12 years ago. Uh, there was a, a dramatic change in the treatment of psychiatric patients in the Netherlands. Um, they used to be all put away in a centralized institution hidden in the woods, 
so that nobody would uh, notice them again. They would sort of be removed from society. And then there was a complete change which started in Italy, amazingly enough, to bring these people back into society as much as is possible, with help, of course. And so from a centralized and hidden institution, it would become a visible institution, but decentralized with different living quarters spread out throughout the city. And um, so I picked up the whole idea of these shapes again. Zwolle, Zwolle is a city in the north of the Netherlands, that where, that's where the hospital is. Port means a gate, a city gate. And uh, what was very nice was that you had these three O's in the middle, which made a sort of heraldic uh, element almost. Uh, but it consists of uh, loose elements, but together it makes a logo. And uh, I thought this uh, did the job very nicely. And, uh, at the psychiatric hospital, they thought so too. Now, uh, back to the. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, back to the uh, university building, 1581. Um, it was a monastery, uh, a nunnery, before uh, the university bought that building, seen at the, the first image, and uh, started the university there. And um, at the same time, um, a famous personality from uh, typography uh, was in trouble. This was Christopher Plentin in Antwerp. It so happened that Plentin, who was the um, printer to the uh, King of Spain, a royal printer, uh, printing Bibles and missals and all kinds of liturgical books for uh, the Roman Catholic Church, had been engaged in printing for the opposition, the uh, Protestants. And um, Spanish troops were approaching Antwerp, and uh, Plantin uh, began to feel uncomfortable and thought it might be wise to leave his firm in the hands of his uh, son-in-law and move north. And then he realized he was a very uh, clever businessman that in the north they had started this new university so he moved to Leiden and instantly became a university printer. So here you see a couple of his uh, books, Ex Officina Cristofori Plantini, um, uh, 1585, and uh, what he used in those uh, books were, first of all, the letters of Claude Garamond, still very popular in those days, and uh, he used italics, uh, to go with the uh, letter forms of uh, Claude Caramon, cut by Robert Grandjean, another Frenchman of uh, younger generation. And uh, another development was that in the last quarter of the 16th century, around the same time, italic began to grow into its present day role. Before that, it had just been an alternative to Roman, much less used than Roman. But there were texts you set in italic, like an introduction to a book, uh, or a poem, or things like that. But um, in the last quarter of the 16th century, it slowly became the sort of help meet of the Roman, a secondary design uh, wherewith you could uh, make things stand out within a text set in Roman type. So uh, I picked up that new role of italic as another theme in uh, my uh, approach to the job for the uh, uh, inscriptions and the uh, carvings. So I realized also that I had never done any lower case with my shapes. I had designed capitals and numerals, so it was about time that I started doing uh, lower case, and this is uh, the lower case A that comes with the uh, set. And here are all the letters that were necessary for setting the texts you have seen uh, earlier. And I decided not to make it a complete alphabet, to uh, design these letter forms for this specific use only and leave it at that. Uh, 
lots of designers are very happy when they have designed a few new letters and immediately make it into a new type family. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do this. This is a very special occasion and uh, I leave it at this. Here is the square, 40 by 40 centimeters. And uh, on these tiles, uh, when you move two tiles together, you have a seam between them. And usually, uh, you have to sort of move around with your text and your letter forms to avoid the seam. In uh, this way, with these letter forms, these sort of stencil-like letter forms, I could incorporate the seams between the tiles uh, in the design, which uh, I thought was a very nice uh, possibility. Here's a very lengthy text which uh, took some uh, maneuvering to uh, fit uh, correctly in the uh, pattern of tiles. And here is uh, one of the other inscriptions. So the inscriptions were not really uh, a problem. Actually, uh, during the designing process, I had to present uh, this uh, print, which was uh, full size printed, a large piece of paper, and I had to make a presentation to the rector of the university, and I had spread out the large print on the floor, and the first thing the rector of the university did was step on it and walk on my letter forms, and I hadn't realized that people would do that. My God, uh, that took some uh, getting used to. And uh, there was another thing he was worried about a bit. He saw all these loose parts and he, uh, um, I, I heard him mumble, so I got close and I thought, what is he saying? And I heard him say, will people be able to read this? Um, I think this presidium, this academia, it must be hard to, uh, well, uh, look, do know, uh, well, actually, I think, and then uh, he sort of faded out. Uh, he could read it all right, so th there were no problems. This was my uh, design for the big carpet in the uh, Senate room. And a um, very lengthy text from one of the letters that um, William of Orange wrote to the uh, uh, man who ruled uh, the Netherlands at that time. And here you see the pattern uh, I took from the wall of the uh, uh, Senate room. And then the colors. Where do you get colors from? Well, actually, that is always a bit arbitrary. Actually, purple is one of my favorite colors. And bright pink, pure magenta, too. And then the brown, where does the brown come from? Well, I, I will tell you, I will let you know, I will admit to it. It's the color of a good cigar. So that's where graphic designers get their inspiration from. This is how the, uh, the, the chairs and the table fit over the carpet, so most of it is hidden. And this is the uh, Ora Est uh, carpet. And then uh, something happened, uh, which I hadn't anticipated. I got in touch with a firm in the center of the Netherlands, a uh, carpet weaving factory. And um, I gave them these designs and asked them for a uh, uh, quote, so that they uh, would let us know what it would cost to make these carpets. And then two weeks later, I got my drawings back, and they said, we can't do it. What? We can't do it? And they said, no, because in weaving, we can do a regular repeating pattern. But letter forms are not a regularly repeating pattern. As a typography, you may think so, but as carpet weavers, we think very differently about this. Uh, letter forms are very irregular. And then I uh, had to think, of course, because I saw the whole possibility of making these uh, letter forms in a carpet sort of uh, drift away. And uh, then uh, I asked them, we had already had discussions about the quality of uh, carpet, and I called them up and asked them, do you, can you let me have 
two square meters of the kind of carpet we have uh, selected in two different colors. And I said, yes, we will do that. And I put a few of my letter forms as digital outlines on a disc um, and went to a laser cutting firm and simply handed them the materials and told them, cut out these letter forms from these pieces of carpet and fit them into each other. And they did. And uh, at the top you see a sample of the uh, sandblasted letter forms in the uh, stone that was chosen. And at the bottom you see the letter forms uh, in uh, textile. And um, with this sample I went back to the uh, carpet factory and uh, simply put it on a table and let them have a look at it. And after a while they said, well, uh, this is not bad. In fact, this is very interesting. And um, they uh, took the idea, uh, because they have uh, a lot of clients in the uh, Arabic market in the Middle East, and in this way you can uh, put text in uh, Arabic text in uh, carpets as well. So. So here are some of the uh, results. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, inscriptions. Uh, the central courtyard of the um, uh, university building was roofed over and turned into a museum. This is the uh, vaulted room and here you have a close look at the uh, letter forms. And uh, here is someone standing on my letter for us, and, uh, looking the other way. Another look at the uh, carpet. And this is uh, the loom on which the um, uh, big carpet was made. An immensely noisy uh, machine and very impressive and uh, it's really fantastic to see your work in uh, progress uh, on a machine like this. And, uh, here you see how they are uh, laying the carpet in the uh, center of the room and it was just uh, uh, about three hours to uh, take this uh, picture of the complete carpet without any furniture on it. Um, after that it was uh, over. Uh, it means a, a firm fortress and the uh, all gatherings from uh, uh, all countries um, that should be collected in a uh, university. Here the furniture is in the uh, Senate room and this is what some of the uh, platforms uh, look like. A uh, bit of the uh, text. more of the text. You know, there is one of the things you hope for is that uh, once you have got such a commission and it has all worked out well, uh, you get more of the same. Uh, so once in my life I was asked to make a stand at a fair uh, for the paper trade in the Netherlands. And that stand uh, was uh, quite a success. Uh, when I entered the exhibition space, the directors of the paper uh, uh, firm uh, I uh, had done the stand for, uh, three, all three of them together came towards me with outstretched hands to congratulate me with their beautiful stand. And uh, so I took pictures of it uh, for slides and uh, took the film to be developers and when I uh, went to pick it up the next day they were very apologetic and they said well we are very sorry something went wrong the film came out all black there's nothing to see there so I panicked a bit and, and uh, because meanwhile the stand had been removed it didn't exist anymore and um, I knew that uh, another photographer had been at work there and had been making black and white photographs 
And I called him up and he said, well, that's uh, weird that you call me on this job because the negatives disappeared. So I can say, yes, I made a very nice and beautiful stand, but I can't prove it. And nobody ever again came to ask me for uh, a stand, the design of a stand. And so this is, these are the only carpets I will ever make, I think. It will never ha happen again. And uh, this is my final image. These are the men that financed the uh, inscriptions and the carpets. It's the class of 47. Thank you all.